So Gary, we've come today to Scotland. We're in the Clyde Valley. Yep. In Lanarkshire. Yes. Um, so you're with, you basically your family own Electromech Agri. That's correct. Okay. So what are we going to see here today? So in here is a it's a Bomatic milking parlour, a which has the cabinets and everything off a Smartway ninety. But then on the reels as such, it's a Electromech design and manufactured product. So we designed the ba basically the baling or the rapid exit system of the parlour. Okay. I think there's a few things different here about the approach as we go in. As people will see. So what are we looking at here or what's the design feature so, here? So whenever we've came in, we've uh, we've actually, we are at the same level outside as we walk in. So basically the cows are at the raise level and we have, this is what we call a breezeway entrance. So the, the actual customer never actually has to step down into a pit. There is no steps in this setup whatsoever. And that's coming from the dairy or the plant room, the office, everything is at the same level as where you're attaching cows at. Okay, and I suppose that's made possible by the fact that the cows are, it's a rapid exit, and the cows are able to go independently back, back, back it, in the other direction. Exactly, there's no, the, the cows don't cross over at the front of the parlour on the exit. The cows exit out the ways, and then walk, pa, da, walk on the exit race, so the cows actually never come up this side of the parlour at all. Okay, so it's um, 16 units each side? Yeah, double 16, 16 yeah. units each side. Okay, and, and a brief summary of the technology on this before we go into detail? So, uh, it, it is basically the top of the range from Bomatic. It has the IP69, the power hose proof uh, detachers. They're all in the stainless steel cabinetry. Um, ICAR approved milk meters. The Flowstar uh, Max cluster. Um, I must say as well, on the, on the Bomatic side, we only use vacuum for milking the cow. So all the ACRs and the shutoffs are all compressed air. So we have a lot of control. We don't have to pull strings down with the vacuum. ACRs maybe getting a bit sticky. Um, everyone's done with compressed air ACR rams and that. Um, and then you can see here, we have a three inch loop lines, the twin receivers, and everything's variable speed drives, variable speed milk pumps and vacuum pumps. What's the process here now when a farmer is looking to put uh, the cups on? So at the moment, the way that the the way that this farm is working, they're doing a, a full prep routine. So when the cow comes into the parlour, it gets ID'd, and you can see there the purple lights mean that we've got a good ID right the whole way down the parlour. So then what the operators are doing is they're cleaning each teat with a, a cloth, um, and then doing a prep, so a draw of each of each quarter of milk, and they're wanting to release that. Basically, what that's doing is releasing oxytocin. Um, from the cow's brain down to her udder to release the, the milk from the in the milk gland and then 90 seconds to two minutes later they're going to be attaching and we shouldn't have any low low flow in milk then so what are we seeing on the screen here before he attaches the, so, the clusters there what we have on the screens is is that on the bomatic touch points basically it tells you the stall number solid purple means a good id and then you have the cow number which is 908 her expected milk yield and then uh, what her actual milk yield is. So at the minute, the expected milk yield is zero because it's not attached, but what she's expecting to give is 19 litres of milk on this on this one. You can bring up other data with the cow. If we scroll down, we can bring it up. So he's just pressing a button here now to activate the vacuum, you see? Yep, so he's just basically activating vacuum and then the next two units arrive up then for a nice presentation for him to start to attach. Um, the reason for this type of system is, is because they're doing a full prep, it keeps the cluster out of the way for them to operate on. Yes. Gary, in terms of the, the pipe position then, say you've got a bracket here, is, is that yeah. something you'd put in the most? Yeah, so in, in, most, in most low lines we would do at this, this setup. So again, we'll have a nice stainless steel curb edge here with all the milk meters mounted on the, on the bracketry all from the curb edge. So basically the shutoff valve is in here and then it comes through the hose support. And then what this is doing is it's keeping the hose nice and short for the cows so there's not a lot of weight on the cluster. And then it's keeping good cluster position. Shells are nicely aligned here. Cows obviously in full flow of milk. And that's what we really want the whole way down is good alignment for each cow um, on each quarter. So if you had a cross, that whenever you cross the front and the back teats, that they're, uh, that they're all in line. Your milk meter then, is it measuring all the milk or is it a cup that's... Yeah, so our, our milk meter is a, a fill and dump milk meter. So in the inside of it, very simple. There's a float that moves up a stem, and then basically we measure the full amount, and then it fills and dumps them with yeah. the full amount. Okay. Same as rotary we saw there a few months back. Exactly the same as the rotary. So again, with Bomatic, we don't have different equipment for 
um, hormones or, or rapid exits. Uh, Bomatic's milk meter is a full ICAR approved milk meter, so what you see on a, this milk meter that could potentially milk a 100 cow herd, you'll see it on a, a, a milking system that would milk a 3,000 cow herd. Okay. As we're looking at the side of the cows here then, so the, the, explain the tray here that's behind the, the cows. Uh, so again, of it? this is a, and it's a good point here, we have a stainless steel, we have a stainless steel a manure tray behind, so it catches manure and, and urine, so it stops it coming in around the operator. But basically, on the front side then we have a cabinet, so all your pulsation lines, your pulsators, your ACRs, everything is in behind these cabinets, so it keeps everything nice and quiet, and keeps everything clean and tidy. As we look at the cows there now exiting on the far side there, so yeah. when you say the sequence of the gates, the first movement is to first, that position. Yeah, first movement to that position allows unloading and allows the operator to clean down, allows the cows to get clear. And then basically once it's clear, the reels will come down themselves automatically, which you're seeing here. The Just cows, cows push coming, out that cow there Yeah, then. we can push out that cow. So there's basically a safety laser that runs right the whole way down the rapid exit so if there is a cow in danger getting crushed it won't let the reels come down on top of her yeah um, and now with the trucks upside down you didn't see any nuts falling out or any noise of nuts falling out and what it allows is the trucks are up in mid-air out of the road operator can hose down any manure that's on the on the rubber matting for the cows to stand on and basically now the reels are coming back down for the cows to load again so whenever the whenever it actually comes down now to the home position the back gate opens and cows come in automatically so the operator hasn't actually done anything there and now you can hear the feed starting again cows got id'd and it's lead feeding the cow then right encourage her to come up yeah encourage her to come up especially useful in longer parlors as i said you know when you're getting into rapid exits of 30 30 cows down each side you know it's a long walk for them not to be getting something at the end of it in terms of the height difference there from where the cows are standing relative to the exit area how much it's it's not a huge distance there well, again maybe a preference to the farmer here was it S slight preference to the farm he wanted a, a, a bigger he wanted a slightly bigger slope so that he could the washings would go down there we would sort of suggest somewhere in around about three inches of a of a step that's around an inch or 25 25 to 50 mil but you know typically it'd be in around about 100 mil of a step and um, there is a percentage fall from the we don't fall the parlor from front to back we fall them from middle to the outside. So operators working walking on a level on a level pit all the time. He's not walking up and down a, a ramp. And the same for the cows there on a level. Um, now when the cows turns round like this, because we're falling it from inside out, it encourages the cow to sit back on the rump rail and the dung tray. So it gives the operator really good a uh, preparation for the cow. The cows there, the others there and they, it means that they're not reaching under the, the rump rail to prep the cow and work on the cow. Okay. Gary, what we might do is explain the feed system, how the feed system is working. So maybe just that from the bin out, you have one supply from the bin, one auger. Yep, one supply from the auger and then it comes into a central, a central hopper here that you can see the black one. Yeah. And then basically, it, and it was to eliminate wear and bends on, on the auger system. So it comes in here and then we have two motors at either end of the in parlor feeders and it basically pulls the feed to each, to each, to each, of, the mo or to each of the feeders. Okay. They're obviously feed to yield then, are electrically operated? Yep, so they're 24 volt uh, DC motor in them, yeah. and they're, they're all linked back to the milk meters, so it's all feed to yield. So one cow could be getting five kilos over the day, the next cow could be getting three kilos over the day, and then they get individually calibrated, to, uh, and then it's obviously feed to yield each cow. Okay, so each hopper then is is filled, you know, if a cow's getting two kilos or five kilos, yep. it's topping it up as required in the main hopper. Yeah, absolutely. You can see it just at the end here where the motor is, you can see a, there's a sensor there. So whenever the bin, each bin moves down a little bit, that starts a timer and then it brings the feed auger on and because where the sensor is is the last one or the last feed bin, it basically fills the rest of them up and then fills the last one up at the, at the end. So all of them in theory should be full every all the time. You can just see the cows coming in now and basically what we have is a small amount of cake being dropped in each, each uh, trough and that's linked off the ID system. So I think this farm set up to 10% of the actual total cow's feed is dispensed at this time. So it's only a little bit just to encourage them in, gets them turned into position. And then because we have sequencing gates here, the cows can't push in everywhere. So basically, third cow has to go into the third stall, fourth cow into the fourth stall.
What's different and what I suppose what I wasn't expecting was uh, electric motors rotating the, the bailing. I was probably expecting hydraulic rams. Yeah. Could you explain how it works? So basically, uh, it comes from a concept Bomatic had a, a, a patent on for years. It was called the expressway. So it was a complete reel, 360 degrees. So the reel uh, rotated right round and, and helped usher the cow out. Um, we took that forward a little bit. So obviously, we adapted it and put feeding on it. So the front end of this parlor is completely designed and manufactured by Electromac. So the great thing is about it, because the reel is the way it's made, it's actually balanced, so it doesn't take a lot of force with hydraulic rams or compressed air rams to lift it up and lift it down. It's not noisy, it's very quiet. So what we have is we have planetary gearboxes linked to a motor either end of the, the reels, and they're controlled from a variable speed drive, so we can actually speed the reel up to let the cows get away faster and then slow it down to make sure the cows have enough time to move away before the, the reel comes back around again. Um, with electric motors, it gives us a lot of control um, with the system rather than just up or down. Um, it, it allows it to be an automatic sequence. Um, and then with it, it's the, it's the pressure. So because it's a, it's a, it pivots in the center of the circle, there's very little pressure on the, on the gearbox, but it's actually holding back all those cows because of the planetary. So I think our gearbox can produce 10,000 Newton meters of, of torque um, and there's no way you could have 50 cows in that row couldn't push back through the gearbox to make it rotate. But the ram, or the, sorry, the motor is a brake motor, so you can hear them click on and click off. So as I said, we it, it's more to do with the control that we get out of the electric yeah. motors than com compressed air hydraulic. Yeah. So it's a, st a significant structure there. Yep. Um, what's the typical weight of each section there, say? So it comes in. Typical section comes in sections of four. Um, and to make it balanced, because obviously at the truck side, it's quite heavy with the stainless steel and the design of it. So at the top end here, we actually have that. That's actually a solid um, 100 by 100 bar that runs across there. So typical weight in each section, we know from galvanizing it, is somewhere around 800 kilos. And that's distributed evenly from the middle, left yep. above and below. Yep. So if we took those motors off, those brake motors off, and had no cows in here, me and you could turn them by hand. They would rotate freely by hand. Yeah. Gary, just a small detail on your feed system. Why isn't the pipe from the feeder dropping down to a straight pipe? So the reason is, again, when we talk about the advantages of the reels, one of the things that we can do with the reel is we can index the cow. So we can actually tighten the cow up. So if you had a, a group of smaller heifers, we can tighten them up so it pushes them again for the operator. But with that then, you're obviously changing the angle of where the chutes are. So we have this much wider top end of the chute so that we can have variations in the reel. If it's bigger cows, we can let the reel out a little bit. Um, so it just, it's a form of indexing, and it'll still allows us to feed the cow in any position then, so you're not having meal drop all over the floor. Okay. 